Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the report launch on the new age uh, energy minerals. And uh, a very special thanks to Secretary Sri Vivek Bharadwaj for uh, joining us this morning at the launch. Uh, may I request our president to please felicitate Pres uh, Secretary with uh, a green certificate. This is our ecological way of welcoming our guests. A thicket of trees in your name, sir. Uh, I'll now request uh, Mr. Pankaj Satija, who's the managing director of Tata Steel Minings, as well as the co-chair of Fiki Mining Committee, regularly guiding us on various work uh, that we do in this area for a welcome address. Good morning, respected Sri Bhardwaj sir, President Fiki, Sri Shurkant Panda, Mr. Salish Patak, Jyoti Ma'am, and dignitaries of the days. We all know the mining has been the backbone of any revolution. So Industry 1.0, we have seen coal, and Industry 4.0, everyone is banking on new age minerals. Energy, climate change, and water, and biodiversity, these are linked. And many people say that if climate change is the shark, water is its teeth. So we see all the manifestation of climate change through its teeth, water. And uh, the recent report of uh, World Meteorological Department, the State of Glo Global Climate 2022, it says that global mean sea level has risen in the first decade of satellite record, that is 1993 to 2002, as 2.27 mm per year. Whereas in the last decade, 2013 to 22, it is 4.62 mm per year. So that is the change, and change is happening very frequent and very fast. Eastern Africa has seen five consecutive failed rainy seizure, and that has put 37 million people at the risk of food insecurity. And we have seen flood in neighboring country, Pakistan also where 1,700 people died. India is also one of the most vulnerable country. And I operate from Orissa. I know Orissa is also one of the most vulnerable state in terms of climate change. And we in Orissa see the risk of cyclone and others. So when these are the challenges and the industry 4.0 is an opportunity, new age energy minerals comes as a rescue, as a savior. And that requires a lot of minerals. So an electric car requires six times more minerals than a conventional car. An onshore wind plant requires nine times more minerals than a gas fire plant. And every country knows this. So supply as well as economic importance is also at risk. So China controls 72% of world solar module, 69% lithium ion batteries, and 45% wind turbine. And recently also, Western Australia has put $40 million as an investment for accelerating the exploration in new age minerals. And Germany, which was not for opening new mines, they have opened a new mines after 27 years in the Black Forest area. So things are evolving, changing, and we need to go step by step, but consistently. And that finds its place in Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 2, Slok 6, that Shanashana Yoprimit, Buddha, Dhiti, Dhitiya, Atma, Sanstana, Manakritva, Anna, Kinchita, Pichintya. You need to move consistently and with patience to reach the objective and improve our intellect and knowledge on these two minerals. With this context, I welcome Sri Vivek Bhadwasa, who has consented to be with us in this great occasion. Thank you, sir, for coming here. Mr. Panda, who has been uh, spearheading Fiki, and he has always been telling one thing to all the committees that we should not take the issue only, we should come with solution. And this is the report, it is his brainchild, and we are going to witness this event today. So I welcome Mr. Shubhakant Panda to this occasion. Mr. Patak has also been guiding us 
and monitoring the day-to-day -day activities of all the committees and how we are progressing towards nation building and coming out with the different solutions. So I welcome Mr. Patak also. I will welcome Jyoti Ma'am who has been constantly on the different events, different reports and guiding us the different committees. My fellow colleagues from different industry, friends from media and other people who are the backbone of organizing this event. Welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pankaj, for outlining the significance of you know, this kind of a report given the evolution that is happening in the economy. Uh, I now have uh, the pleasure of inviting our president, Mr. Shubhrakant Panda, uh, to uh, you know, give his keynote address. And he was the one who actually guided us to do this report, conceptualize, help us finalizing, and oversaw it at every stage. So thank you, sir, for giving us the opportunity to put this kind of a report on table. And may I request you to kindly join uh, That The team has worked so hard to put together this uh, report, which I believe will uh, add a lot of value in a very uh, important area. Uh, not fair for me to take the credit. Uh, I did push them, but I must, uh, right at the beginning, acknowledge the hard work done by Jyoti and her team, Arpan, uh, the Deloitte team who worked on the report, um, not fair for me to take uh, credit at all. <coughs> As you just heard from, uh, from Mr. Satija, mining is a very important activity which uh, you know, contributes around 2.5% uh, of uh, GDP. And uh, sustained reforms uh, introduced by this government have certainly provided impetus to industrial and manufacturing activity in the, in the country. And this in turn, of course, is further driving mineral consumption. So when we talk about Amritkal, which is when India will be celebrating 100 years of independence, and it's the Honorable Prime Minister's vision that we are a developed nation by then, uh, it's very important to, uh, to build uh, integrated mining and supply chains in order to be self-reliant. So when we talk about uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat, it's of course not an insular vision, but we certainly must be self-reliant and have sourcing strategies for, um, for everything that is important for the country's uh, growth. So India is, of course, well endowed with uh, 95 minerals, including fuel, atomic, metallic, non-metallic, and minor minerals. But um, as per data which is currently available, there is quite a distance to travel uh, when it comes to new age energy minerals, which are uh, classified as uh, battery min minerals and rare earth uh, elements. These are, of course, uh, essentials for, essential for India's growth uh, given that they have, uh, you know, use in diverse applications like metallurgy and chemical industries, uh, energy storage for renewable energy, electric mobility, high-end industrial applications, uh, all of it in one way or the other uh, link back to, uh, to either battery minerals or uh, rare earth uh, elements. So um, all of you who are present here would be, of course, aware that when we talk about uh, rare earth uh, elements, they are moderately abundant in the earth's crust but uh, not concentrated enough to make them economically uh, exploitable. Therefore, uh, I mean, in fact, to cite a very interesting data point, despite significant em emphasis on um, exploration, global reserves of uh, REEs have increased from 100 million tons in 2000 to only 130 million tons in 2022. So that, that outlines how difficult it is to identify and then work out a strategy to, to extract and exploit these uh, resources. Um, what we are, um, you know, therefore it is very clear that battery minerals like lithium and other rare earth elements have emerged as strategic minerals. And uh, what is very clear is that geographical occurrence is limited as you will see in the report. Uh, and what is also happening that increasingly countries which have these resources uh, are either looking to conserve them for their own requirement or that of friendly, na uh, friendly nations. In fact, um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you would have heard about Chile uh, nationalizing their uh, lithium uh, reserves, and um, many other countries are looking at, uh, at, um, at such uh, uh, restrictions in order to preserve uh, resources. If I were to share some data points, uh, uh, Mr. Satija mentioned that, but um, if you look at the, ch if you look at, uh, the picture, it's actually uh, quite uh, interesting in the sense that China has an overwhelming presence, processing 94% of REEs, 75% of graphite, 65% of cobalt, 58% of lithium, and 35% of uh, nickel. Uh, India, on the other hand, is very import dependent in FY22, 
We imported approximately $25 million of uh, worth uh, lithium oxide and hydroxide, $31 million worth of cobalt in various forms, $230 million of nickel in various uh, forms, and $24 million uh, worth of natural graphite. Um, so there is clearly going to be a surge in demand when uh, India grows and becomes, as India grows and becomes more um, high tech. Um, if quoting from the report, we estimate that by 2030, demand for lithium would be anywhere between 62 to 109 kilo, uh, thousand tons. Cobalt would be from 88 to 165 thousand tons. Nickel would be anywhere from uh, one, uh, 1230 to 1480 thousand tons and graphite anywhere between 2,800 to 3,700,000 uh, tons. Therefore, it is important to formulate a long-term strategy to ensure uninterrupted supply. Um, you know, this is, this is going to call for, of course, ongoing exploration to identify occurrence, uh, enhanced technology adoption and increased efficiencies to augment production. For example, if you look at, um, uh, you know, if you look at um, nickel, which occurs in the Sukinda Valley, uh, along with uh, chromite, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is nickel, but the, the concentration is not enough to, uh, to economically exploit. And therefore, um, you know, two things have to happen. Either prices go up significantly for that to become viable, or we come up with uh, newer technologies which, is, which are able to more efficiently uh, harness that uh, or extract that, uh, that reserve and make it uh, workable at present prices. Uh, what is very clear, uh, and I think this is a key recommendation of the, of the report, that India must leverage its expertise in mining as well as its uh, strategic uh, relationships to access and uh, extract these resources. Um, so the report on New Age Energy Minerals is, as I said, um, uh, a lot of effort has gone into it and uh, we have compiled both geographical and geological information, uh, the value chain including end use sectors and applications, market outlook and estimated long-term demand for each of these minerals as well as uh, specific challenges and opportunities uh, to, along with key recommendations. If I were to look at some of the specific recommendations, one is that uh, you know less than 10 percent of India's obvious geological potential has been explored till date and there is an urgent need as indeed has been articulated by the government and, and policies which are supportive of that, uh, of that, of that uh, target. Uh, to, um, to enhance exploration and not just uh, traditional uh, reserves but also areas like seabed mining which have uh, vast potential. Uh, that apart, the uh, NMET funds which are available uh, in our opinion should be used for augmenting uh, exploration activity and in fact when we had called in on, uh, on Mr. Bharadwaj uh, last week to invite him for the event, uh, he was sharing about some steps already being taken in this regard. And you know, that is just reflective of how uh, responsive and, and open to opportunities this government is, uh, and led by a dynamic uh, person like Mr. Bharadwaj uh, in, in terms of um, uh, the steps which have been conceptualized, and I deeply appreciate that. Uh, we must, of course, look to incentivize R&D spends to develop enhanced benefici beneficiation technology for recovery of energy minerals. I just referred to nickel, for example. And of course, exploration technology, refining technology, extraction from secondary sources like um, from red mud, uh, when it comes to, um, uh, from, uh, which is a byproduct itself of aluminum, uh, recycling, and uh, of course, material recovery from end use products like uh, e waste. So, um, in conclusion, what I would like to, to mention is that what is obvious is that. Um, uh, while there is, uh, you know, a challenge ahead of us to, to break China's monopoly in this and look at ways and means to um, ensure that um, India's growth potential is not hampered in any way uh, and we must get uh, uninterrupted uh, uh, access or uninterrupted supply of these critical minerals. And that will call for collaboration between key stakeholders, which is the central and state governments, as well as, as uh, private sector. And that is where I think, um, you know, I would like to reiterate that FIKI is committed to working with all stakeholders and as the apex business chamber in the, in the country, we are certainly, uh, you know, this is a key area and we will put our full might uh, to, uh, to, um, to play a positive role uh, in this regard. And uh, once again, just to acknowledge the role by, um, played by Jyoti Arpan, the team and, and, and the entire team and Deloitte in putting to together this report, which I hope that all the data and information contained therein uh, will be useful for all of you with interest in the subject. Thank you.
Thank you so much, uh, President, for outlining uh, you know the uh, you know, why we went for this report and what are some of the recommendations and uh, the details about the report. It's about time we request uh, Secretary uh, Mining, Mr. Bharatwaj, to release the report uh, for everybody. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Bharatwaj. Uh, we have, you know, uh, with us today, not only a bureaucrat, but a very proactive bureaucrat, one of the most proactive ones we know, open to consultations, credited with several important reforms during his career, and we look forward to several more uh, in this area and others. So may I request, sir, for your uh, address, please, uh, to us uh, on this occasion. I'm delighted to be here. I'm really very happy to find Fikki working on New Age Minerals. This is a, an area which is the rage in the world. Everywhere we go, this is what people are talking about. And it's time that <coughs> India started talking about it too. Like I said, I'm very happy that Fikki has put together this report. This report, I was very lucky to have a look at it, is not only very comprehensive, the most unique part of it is that it is so detailed. It gives you a perspective of each and every mineral, and the recommendations are solid. I can assure you that when we formulate our policy prescriptions for the sector, we will certainly take them into account. Some of these stand out, for example, offshore mining or the need for us to encourage uh, capital investment through financial incentives for machinery and other capital goods. Taken together, this is going to be very important for us to learn from. Let me take this opportunity to talk about critical minerals. Critical minerals, of course, include rare earths also. Two things are important about critical minerals. One, every country decides and identifies its critical minerals based on its own resource endowments. The United Kingdom, for example, has 18 such minerals identified. Canada has 31. The other point is that over a period of time, what you think of is as critical changes. Minerals have been critical to human civilization since the very beginning. Civilization, as we know it, started in the Bronze Age. Now, bronze, of course, is an alloy. Industrialization started in those countries which had rich deposits of iron ore and coal. Today is another generational opportunity which will define where nations will be in the next 50 years as the globe transits to a net zero future. Interestingly, the first application of vanadium was in the T-Mobile made by Ford obviously in the last century. 
Lithium was first used to lubricate fighter aircrafts in World War II. But how did everything suddenly change? How did the world wake up? In 2010, China put a quota restriction of exports to exports of rare earths. And within four months, July to September, the price of rare earths rose by 270%. This is what criticality is. I will give you another example. During the COVID pandemic, there were no chips being exported to India. And that is why we were having long waiting lines for motor vehicles. This is only about delay. What about a situation where we are at war with a country and the supplies stop. This is the criticality of these minerals. I will take up one mineral and show you how this happens. There is a rare earth called ilmenite. Ilmenite comes from beach sands. Beach sands are in Tamil Nadu, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala. We all heard of what is this gigantic proportion of minerals that China has. Now let me tell you an interesting thing. 11% of the world's deposits of ilmenite are in India. It is used primarily in the paints industry for white pigment there is no substitute to aluminite from aluminite we get titanium dioxide and there is no substitute to titanium dioxide in the world it is the least expensive most widely used pigment in the paint industry if we are 11 percent resource base we should be a major producer However, we import only a billion dollars worth of titanium dioxide every year. How does that happen? Because we decided that beach sand minerals are an area which should be only open to public sector units. Because with Elemonite, the parent of titanium dioxide, there is something called monazite. And these are all very confusing to me also. <coughs> anyway, so this because you might have monazite and because you might have uranium and you because you might have thorium, it's best to keep away. Another problem is that our companies use the sulphate technology and it is a chloride technology which is more efficient. Therefore our units are not technolo technologically advanced, they are not economically viable, we make love. A very strange situation. So what would be the policy prescription? Obviously first would be open up the sector, the second would be to have more domestic exploration and so on and so forth. But there is another twist to the tale. The twist is that some of my dear friends in Tamil Nadu who were mining beach sand minerals once upon a time as private entities started exporting it without license. They got into all sorts of trouble. The High Court intervened, the government intervened and it is all a total mess today. There are some courts which have given stay orders, 
there are some courts which have given judgment for which appeal is pending in the Supreme Court. So we make life tough for ourselves. I think we need to take a decisive step in all these areas. Another area is offshore mining, which Mr. Panda mentioned. Offshore mining, the act was in, enacted in 2002. We're in 2023. We were unable to take out a single rock from the seabed. The reason is again litigation. I think this is a government which is very decisive, very proactive. And we are in the process of amending the Offshore Areas Act. It was put in the public domain for consultations. The consultations are also now over. And it would be shortly debated by parliament, hopefully very soon. So these are some of the areas which we need to look at. Many of, our, of the countries in the world have come out with policy prescriptions. We are also thinking of how do we address these policy concerns. And I'm sure within a short period, we would be addressing many of these issues which this report has raised and which Mr. Panda in his address did. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, sir, for a very insightful uh, and uh, uh, an address which is a lot of which shows your passion and in-depth knowledge in the subject. But I must acknowledge that before starting the report, I had the honor of meeting Mr. Bharadwaj in his office and mentioned about the report. So he showed me two reports and said, this we already have. Can you add to this? So that was the challenge. Hope we are able to, we have been able to live up to that uh, to some extent, but we'll definitely be guided by you in the future as well. Uh, so thank you once again, sir, for joining us this morning and releasing the report. We now turn to our Secretary General, Mr. Shailesh Patak. Uh, you know, he's joined us about, I think, 60 days or so, and a rare combination of uh, public and private, equal numbers in government and uh, in the private sector, and we've had the honor of having him as a CEO of the organization. So Shailesh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think it's only fair you know, uh, to the audience who have invested their time in uh, unveiling of this report, that Secretary uh, 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 Mr. Vivek Bhardwaj has agreed to take a couple of questions. So the floor is open. Anyone who would like to ask a question, the mic will uh, uh, reach you from here. Yeah. And yes, Mr. Salotra. Uh, I guess I'm on to. Yes, you are. And incidentally, you must uh, introduce yourself with your FIKI affiliation also. People should get impressed. No, let me come straight to the question. See, we grew up, uh, we grew up in school reading about the thorium sands. You know, we have a lot of thorium. And that was, I guess, in the 70s or late, or, or late 70s. Uh, I, I want to know what's going on on that front. Or are we still where we were? Are we still teaching our kids that we have a lot of thorium and we haven't moved much? The first question. We'll take a couple more. Uh, yes, Mr. Sethi. Yeah. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, I think it's been the first interaction, and uh, very clearly your insights. In fact, today I must say that I have the trio in front, which will lead the mining sector to the next level very clearly. I think it, the knowledge of Mr. Panda is amazing. And uh, you are there, sir, obviously leading uh, the country into this. And we can't have a better leader than Mr. Patak doing this. Other than, you know, Ms. Jyoti and uh, Satija Di, we've been working together. But I think that this trio is something which I request for. And there are a number of areas where I think we are moving already. But two, three areas of, I think, great interest to everybody are there. I think one thing which 
the mines ministry is already doing is under section 20 where you have already started that all the mining leases which are all over the place and not been utilized for so many years by the state governments have to come into the auction regime. I think that is something which is very proactive and very good for the mining sector. A nudge, further nudge and push from your strict side to all of them, I think will help us. That is one. And the second very specific area, I mean, there are so many areas, but this specific area, which I've had the opportunity to discuss with Mr. Patak earlier also, has been the surface rights. To move the mining sector from where we are to the next level, unless we move on the surface rights, I don't think all the auctions which have happened will not find fulfillment. I think that is an area where, again, the mining uh, ministry has taken a, a go ahead on this. But if you take this under Section 20, which I understand the mining ministry is doing, I think that will move. So I'm not want to take too much of your time because I'm the other question. But these are the two thoughts which I request for your kind intervention. And uh, all three, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, I'll come to you, but there is at least one question from people under 30 in this room because I believe that younger people are smarter. So people under 30, get ready for your question. Third question. From uh, uh, steel industry producing alloy and special steels, particularly for the auto sector. And uh, I think... Uh, Examples which have been talked about, it influences uh, a great deal on automobiles and uh, their demand. I think we recently heard about uh, its uh, availability of finding, and I think it would be good to hear as to what are the plans for its mining in the near future. Okay. Dr. Dhawan from Alloy Steel Producers Association, closely associated with FIKI, since long on many of the Right. One more question and then we are good to go for the answers. Any others? Yeah, Sir. someone at the back? Yeah, go ahead. Take a mic. Yeah, Sir, uh, a mic. myself Ashish Das from Vedanta. Uh, Sir, along with new age minerals, we should also focus on new age mineral processing as well as manufacturing. So my question to you, uh, the panelist is, as a country, what are the first steps we should do, both industry and government, to develop these manufacturing capabilities? Ashish, are you under 30? No, sir. Right. Unfortunately, so no. Option is still open. And we have uh, the fortune of uh, having not only the Secretary Mining, but the President Fiki himself, who is a mineral expert. So, wherever he'd like to add, over to you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, so Good afternoon, sir. No, we'll, we'll come to the sure. under 30s in the next round. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take up yours first. Um, आप दिल को बड़ा कीजिए और आर्मानों को और ऊंची ऊंचाइयों तक ले जाइए आप आप सिर्फ सरफेस राइट्स की बात क्यों कर रहे हैं कम छोटा सोच रहे हैं हम सारे क्लेरेंसेस की बात कर रहे हैं आज की तारीख में हम पांच राज्यों के साथ 21 माइंस के प्री एम्बेडेड क्लेरेंसेस पे काम कर रहे हैं और होपफुली इस साल के अंदर हम पहला ऑप्शन इस तरह का करें ठीक तो जब आप स्कूल में थे और मैं भी स्कूल में था तब थोरियम की बात मैंने भी पढ़ी थोरियम बीच सैंड मिनरल के साथ ही मतलब जो मैंने दसवीं में वो जो पीरियोडिक टेबल पढ़ा था ना वो आज फिर पढ़ना पड़ा देखिए क्या त्रास दी है नहीं 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 सो सो यू सी दिस इज अगेन अ पार्ट ऑफ दी द इश्यू दैट आई टॉक्ड अबाउट व्हेन आई टॉक्ड अबाउट यू नो एलिमिनाइट रूटाइल दीज आर ऑल बीच सैंड मंडल्स दे आर ऑल इन एसोसिएशन विद थोरियम यूरेनियम एंड देयरफॉर दे आर ऑल अ पार्ट ऑफ द ज्यूरिडिक्शन ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एटॉमिक एनर्जी the country decided once of you know decades back that these were too sensitive 
so we have moved a proposal to remove these from the jurisdiction of department of atomic energy so that we can take some steps forward as far as many of these elements are concerned right? then there was about lithium i purposely did not want to talk about lithium because लिथियम कोबाल्ट निकेल की इतनी बातें हो गई हैं कि बाकी और किसी चीज की कोई बात ही नहीं करता जबकि और भी बहुत सारी अपॉर्चुनिटी इसीलिए मैंने टाइटानियम डाइऑक्साइड की बात करी एनी वे लिथियम इज इन दब्लिक डोमेन वी हैव बीन लकी टू डिस्कवर फाइव पॉइंट नाइन फिलिंग टर्स एंड लाइक अदर प्लेस वी वर एक्चुअली इन द पास लुकिंग फॉर लाइम स्टोन because it is limestone deposits which are available in jammu kashmir we found limestone bauxite and lithium together so uh, over this period there has been renewed interest in exploration also in these minerals and therefore what was not very found very important at one you know at one point of time is again of importance and therefore uh, maybe in another century you know maybe 100 years back if lithium had been found we would not have been interested i found it very surprising that when we released these 51 reports we released 51 reports in the month of february only one was of lithium four were of gold nobody looked at gold the entire attention and focus was on lithium so this year again we will be continuing with the exploration efforts in that area and uh, that should again be completed within this calendar year so we are very hopeful of further discovery the other one was about processing processing again uh, you know the the example i gave of titanium dioxide and the sulfate method and the chloroid method was exactly this that we need to focus on processing even though china may not be the largest lithium uh, you know uh, reserves it may not have the largest lithium reserve but it processes the maximum amount of lithium the ore is sent to uh, china for uh, processing it is not that india does not have the processing technologies what we need to work is on substitutes and more efficient technologies like mr panda talked about nickel from chromium the dumps those is what we need to work on and uh, we plan to rein in both our government labs we have some fantastic research going there with our private sector initiatives to find more such uh, processing technologies thanks that's the first round the second round begins with you please go ahead and introduce yourself first huh Um, good morning, sir. My name is Karthik, and I'm from Vedanta. So you mentioned uh, pre-embedded clearances. So, sir, what are your st the steps that the ministry is taking uh, to streamline the post-lease clearance? So, post-lease clearances. All Streamlining right. the time cost. Thank you, Karthik. Anyone else? Anyone else? So that's the last question. All right. Thanks. What all are the states and oh, a number of mines you already mentioned? Twenty-one. What are the mines, iron ore, or some other sure. kind of minerals? And a little bit on that, sir. And you are from? I am Abhishek from PTI. I cover minerals and mining. Industry. Very good. Yeah, so PTI you. news agency, whatever you say will be. And, and I am I am close to thirty. Good, Abhishek. Well done. <laughs> Thank Indian you. Indian youth is fifteen to thirty-five. You are well. Uh, <laughs> about uh, mining we should get this out of our minds and there are many many mining experts here and i am the least informed that mining you can bring a mine into production in a few months time nowhere in the world does it happen it takes decades for a mine to start producing 
you can check the figures from everything. <coughs> And so let us get this out of our mind that there, there is something, a quick fix solution to this. There is no solution. In fact, you must go the hard way. And the hard way is to ensure that the rights of the communities which are there are <coughs> protected fully. That the forests which are our lifeline and more so now are fully protected. So please don't think that we will have a magic wand ever. Mining is not good for the environment. We have to accept that. Mining is essential for human civilization. We must also accept that. Right? I think that is the more relevant <laughs> you know, answer to your question. Dunya mein kahi bhi aisa nahi ho. आज की तारीख में कनाडा के इंटीरियर्स में जहां माइनिंग की शुरुआत होने वाली है द इंडिजिनस कम्युनिटीज हैव अ वीटो कि माइनिंग वहां पर होगी कि नहीं अगर हम यहां पर आज बात करने लगे इस बात की तो बवाल हो जाएगा किसान भी तो बड़े रिस्ट्रिक्शंस लगा दिए हैं या तो सरकार बड़ी अनफ्रेंडली टू इंडस्ट्री है अब कनाडा को तो आप नहीं कहेंगे ना अनफ्रेंडली टू इंडस्ट्री थ्रू एन एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट द इंडिजिनस कम्युनिटीज हैव द राइट टू वी टू एनी एनी डेवलपमेंट इन दर टेरिटरीज यू आर आस्किंग मी वट अगेन प्राइमरली द सेम थिंग विच आर दिस विच आर दोज So, so, I so was, yeah, I was asking about the state. Twenty-one, twenty-one yeah. mines. The twenty-one mines are of all, all kinds. They're all kinds. They're limestone also. They're iron ore also. They're all. They're all. <coughs> so, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. And I'd just like to say that you said that minerals are essential to human civilization. And in this room. whether organic or inorganic everything has been derived from vasudha everything has come from the earth and we are in the g20 year vasudha kutumbu kutumbakam so you mentioned that critical minerals in the united kingdom are 18 and in canada are 31 you also mentioned that in 2010 our northern neighbor imposed some restrictions which is why the prices of these critical minerals Uh, 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 went up drastically, so it is even more important for an Atmanirbhar Bharat to come up with our own uh, 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 resilience in in minerals. You mentioned about aluminite and beach sands and thorium. I remember reading about that. But what I really found uh, very interesting was your candor about the way India should build up our own strengths. Um, you said that you are the least informed actually i am the least informed you are the secretary and i had no idea about you know uh, rare earth elements or critical minerals till uh, last night when i went through this very good report and this is a great example of the collaboration between government and business and non profits and academia research innovation um i just like to say thank you to the secretary mr vivek uh, bhardwaj I'd like to say thank you for uh, uh, taking the lead on this to our uh, president Shubhrakan Panda, and uh, uh, in particular our colleague Jyoti, additional director general, and Arpan and his team. Please raise your hands so that people recognize you, Arpan. Yeah, and and the team. Thank you, and the team from Deloitte, which who have actually put together an excellent report. Of course, we paid them for it. Um, and therefore this report is available for fiki members and we are starting from today if you want to download any report from fiki's knowledge repository you just have to put your email or phone number you'll get an otp and you'll get a free download for these reports so that's an innovation starting today thank you all for attending thank you